Hello again, everyone. Today I want to share a little bit of what we read in the Bible last Sunday. My son read Psalm 64, and after reading it, or while he was reading it, I just thought, oh my, this is really speaking to the times that we live in right now. So I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV Bible, and I want you to consider what is going on politically in our world today as I read this. And I think you will agree with me just how pertinent this is. So it begins, it's a Psalm of David. And so he begins saying, Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plot of the wicked, from the throng of evildoers, who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows, shooting from ambush at the blameless, shooting at him suddenly and without fear. They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? They search out injustice, saying, We have accomplished a diligent search. For the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. But God shoots his arrow at them. They are wounded suddenly. They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. Then all mankind fears. They tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exult. Well, does this remind you of anything? Doesn't this sound exactly what has been playing out politically now? Let's read it again now and let's apply it to what's been going on. And I'm not equating President Trump with David. So far, I don't think that God has turned Donald Trump's heart toward him in the same way that he did David. But I think that is coming. But think of this psalm as having been written by President Trump. Hear my voice, O God in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Who are President Trump's enemies? Virtually everyone except those who voted for him and who have continued to support him and have begun to support him since he was elected almost three years ago now. But everyone has fought against him in the most tenacious ways that you can imagine. So imagine President Trump praying, preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Can you imagine the dread that you would be in if you were constantly attacked like President Trump is attacked? Can you imagine living under the constant barrage of hate, like vile hate that he has been under? And this is why I just totally repudiate and rebuke the people who say that Trump is on the same team as all these people who are wagging their tongues at him, who are attacking him, who are trying to destroy him, who talk about killing him or killing his family. I've never heard that kind of speech in my entire long life with respect to political foes. They don't work for the same side. And God is going to be making that very clear shortly. Not today, but I believe in a few weeks. Verse 2 of Psalm 64, continuing President Trump in the place of David praying, Hide me, from the secret plots of the wicked, 
from the throng of evildoers. Their plots have been made in secret, haven't they? But that secrecy is about to come out. President Trump did an interesting press conference today. Today is May 22nd, 2019. And he is now beginning to forcefully call out the Democrats for what they did. He's beginning to call out their secret plots. Hide me, he prays, from the secret plots of the wicked and from the throng of evildoers who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows. Their words have been bitter. Their words have been vile. Their words have been evil. Their words have fomented revolution in this country. Their words have fomented violence in this country. Their tongues are like swords. They want to create bloodshed. Shooting from ambush at the blameless. Shooting at him suddenly and without fear. They don't seem to fear, do they? The Democrats, the media, those who have attacked Trump relentlessly for three years, they don't seem to fear, do they? They ambush him. And he has been proven blameless after 30 plus million dollars were spent by Mueller and his team to destroy Donald Trump. He was found blameless. Verse 5. But they hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? They search out injustice, saying, we have accomplished a diligent search. And that's still what they're doing, isn't it? Mueller came back with his 400-plus page report, finding Trump did nothing wrong. All resources were open to Mueller. The investigation was so complete. It's baffling to me as an attorney to even imagine that Trump allowed them to do that. And he did allow them to do that. He could have stopped things before, but he didn't. He allowed them because he had done nothing wrong. See, he knew that he had done nothing wrong. And now what are the Democrats doing? Even after the Mueller report comes in, they want to continue their diligent search, their diligent search for the truth. No, no. Their diligent search to figure out how can we entrap Donald Trump? How can we impeach him? How can we destroy him? Now the question we all ought to be asking is, why is this happening? What, what is it? What is it that Donald Trump is doing that so inflames all of the Democrats, all of the media, and all of the never-Trumper Republicans like Mitch Romney? And whatever the name that congressman was from Michigan who said that Trump ought to be impeached. What is it that Trump is doing that is so upsetting to these people. This is a huge revelation and it's, it's going to be coming forth very soon because it still has not become clear to the people and has not even dawned upon God's prophets what is actually going on right now. Mark Taylor is one of the few prophets who are seeing these things clearly. Then verse 7. So we've just now, we've seen what the Democrats are doing. And then God sums it up by saying, For the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. Deep waters, boy. It boggles my mind that they can sit in public view and say the things that they say, knowing that everything they say is false. It boggles my mind. I don't know how a man does that. I can't comprehend it. 
because I can't do it. Okay, I win criminal defense cases because my clients are innocent. I don't win because I lie to a jury to convince them of something that is false. I look for facts to prove that my client is innocent, if in fact he is innocent. And if he's not, then I advise him to take the best plea he can get. But the Democrats, the Never Trumpers, the Rhinos, Republicans in name only, they can lie to your face and not even change. Look, how do they do that? What's inspiring them? What's inspiring them? Think about it. Verse 7, Psalm 64, 7. But God shoots his arrows at them. They're wounded suddenly. 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 They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. Their words are going to be used against them and they will fall and they will fail because of their own words. Because of their lies, because of their dirty tricks, because of their blackmails, because of their other many sins. They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. The time is coming when people will be saying, I always knew it. Even the rank and file Democrat supporters, finally, many will come to their senses and wag their heads at their leaders. Then, all mankind fears. All mankind fears. See, this psalm is prophetic. David was speaking to the far future. It had never happened. It has never happened yet, but it's going to happen. Then, all mankind fears. Fears. Why? Because suddenly, men are accountable again. See, those who have ruled for a long, long time are never held accountable. Hillary Clinton was never held accountable for the many things she did. Barack Obama has never been held accountable for the many things that he did. James Comey, never held accountable for the many things he did. John Brennan, on and on. You can say that about all of these people, Eric Holder, Loretta Lynch, James Clapper, all of them are still free and chirping like birds, lying like there's never going to be accountability. But there will be accountability and it's coming soon. Then all mankind fears. They tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. We are coming into this. And then David ends. Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in, the, in heart exult. Let us pray that together. Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exult before their God. Amen.